uh, Rohan, there'll be Rohan 30 seconds. Thanks, Vice President Corla. Uh, well, obviously, Minister, last uh, week was Road Safety Week, but I think up to um, a few days ago, 118 of our citizens had tragically died on the roads. Now, uh, before last uh, Christmas, uh, we passed the Road Traffic Act. Um, uh, at, and Section 35A specifically said it shall be an offence for the owner of a vehicle to allow their vehicle to be driven by a learner driving, uh, driver driving unaccompanied. Now, in the past 10 months, you've done absolutely nothing uh, to commence that section. Um, as you know, the provision came forward in response to calls uh, from the uh, Park Ray Road Safety Group and also from Mr Noel Clancy uh, of uh, North Cork, uh, a farmer uh, who has uh, tragically lost his wife Geraldine um, and daughter Louise in a a road traffic crash uh, with an unaccompanied uh, learner driver. So, Minister, you promised, you promised us, I think, uh, just after Christmas, uh, that this relevant section would come into force as soon as possible, uh, that you check with the AG. Uh, you also told RT in, uh, on January 6 uh, last, uh, in responding to the Clancy's uh, family's demand, uh, that, that this would be done, and it still hasn't been done, ten months on. Two, mi two minutes, Minister. Yeah, yeah the, everything that the Deputy says is right. It's absolutely correct, and it, uh, I am, as I, as I suspect the uh, House knows, or some of those who are present in the House, that I'm totally behind this amendment. I accept this amendment from the opposition on the day, and I'm still supportive of it. Uh, but let me explain what's happened in the meantime, and I think they'll probably understand and Deputy Monsters in the House uh, who propose this particular amendment. It's an offence for learner drivers to drive unaccompanied under the Road Traffic Act and enforcement of this requirement is a matter for Angarda Shikona. During on the debate on the Road Traffic Bill 2016, to which uh, Deputy Bruin rightly referred, several deputies raised the case of Geraldine and Louise Clancy, Clancy who had been tragically killed in December 2015 in a collision with an unaccompanied learner driver. The Clancy family had asked for owners of cars who allowed learners to drive them unaccompanied to be held accountable. Amendments to give effect to this were proposed at the time, and I accepted an amendment proposed by Deputy Munster. Under this amendment, it is to be an offence for a vehicle owner to allow a learner to drive their vehicle unaccompanied, with the penalty on conviction of a fine up to a maximum of €2,000 and or imprisonment up to a maximum of six months. As I stated in the debate in accepting this amendment, learners who drive unaccompanied are committing an offence and it is very reasonable that people who knowingly facilitate this offence share responsibility for it. As a result, Section 39 of the Road Traffic Act 2016 provides for the offence where the owner of a vehicle allows it to be a, driven by a learner driver driving unaccompanied. As there was unfortunately no opportunity for full, proper legal scrutiny of the text in advance of its adoption, I indicated that the amendment will need such scrutiny before commencement. Preliminary legal advice has been obtained and has outlined a number of issues which would need to be addressed prior to commencement. These include drafting and definitions, the question of strict liability and interaction with other road traffic legislative provisions. However, I am anxious to address this issue and I have asked my officials to look at amending section 41 of the Road Traffic Act 1994 to give power to Angarda Shikona to detain vehicles driven by an unaccompanied learner driver which they do not currently have. Oh my God. Everyone needs to be aware that a learner is not a license to drive, but a permit allowing somebody to drive without a license for the purpose of learning. It is not to be treated as a license, nor do we want to go back to the old culture whereby some people were happy to remain learners for decades. I want to enact this measure, and I want to assure both, part, both, both you and Deputy Munster that I will do everything to see that this measure Remind is enacted. Deputy Rohan. Sir, well, your reply is very disappointing, and, and uh, uh, there doesn't seem to be any sense of urgency. Uh, uh, um, former uh, Minister for Justice uh, Fitzgerald, uh, a few months ago, she, I mean, she gave me some very stark figures in, in relation to the number of fatal and serious injury collisions involving unaccompanied uh, learner drivers, 2012 to, uh, to the end of November 2016. And in 2012, uh, the unaccompanied learner drivers were involved in seven fatal collisions, uh, and in 22, uh, uh, very 
serious uh, traffic collisions. In 2013, they were involved in four fatal con collisions uh, and in two unspecified uh, fatal collision, uh, uh, and 10 were involved in serious uh, traffic collisions. 2014, eight were involved in uh, fatal traffic uh, collisions, and 32 unaccompanied drivers were involved in serious uh, traffic collisions. Um, and in uh, 2015, uh, 16 were involved in fatal traffic uh, collisions and 24 in serious traffic collisions. And finally, in 2016, up to November, seven unaccompanied learner drivers were involved in um, fatal traffic collisions and 24 in serious traffic collisions. Uh, now, these are, are very stark figures, Minister, um, and I, I don't think, and I, I know Deputy Munster uh, um, obviously um, would, be, uh, would feel exactly the same way. I mean, I don't think you're acting here with, with the sense of urgency that the situation demands. Uh, you know, the, you, you told us you'd get this legal advice, you could come forward with whatever amendment was necessary to the 1994-1961 Act or whatever, uh, but, but you simply haven't done it. Um, no, and, uh, it, you know, it, it does, it raises another question, and, and the most important, there are, by the way, there are other sections of the 2016 Act, for example, um, the rickshaw um, uh, provision as well, you, you haven't Minister. commenced. I mean, what's the point of coming in, into this House with you as Minister for Transport? Uh, and I also feel, by the way, that you were kind of shafted in the budget negotiations yesterday, uh, you know, that transpired, looking, seriously looking at your estimate. But you come in here, we, pa we, we spent hours talking about Minister, legislation, please. we pass the legislation, we do our legislative yeah, job, and you fail, you fail to commence it, you fail to implement it. You're not doing your job, Minister. Minister, I've been too lenient, one minute. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, can I go the, <coughs> you're, wrong about the, you're wrong about the estimates, but we'll come to that under another title some other, some other day. The, yeah, it, that, that's just not true. It's just, we, we've got the most enormous injection of money, which I suspect any transport minister has ever had in terms of capital investment. The, uh, let me just address the issue of the rickshaw. Um, yeah, that, that was, that was another, another issue which, which I accepted in this House, but, and I referred it to the people who know about it, which is the NTA, and they're coming forward with proposals to amend the rickshaw Act, and that will be done. That will be done and is being addressed. It's being addressed directly as a result of exchanges in this House, you know, and by the fact that I've accepted. And the reason we're having a debate on this, Deputy Bruin, is because I accepted your amendment. Not very often that amendments get accepted on the floor of this House. The difficulty was not in the content. The difficulty is in the drafting. The difficulty here is in the definitions. And that is what I've got to clear up, and it would be madness for me to go ahead with this particular amendment, laudable and all as it is, it was, if it was to land up in the courts on day one. Come on, I get what I want to do is make sure it's robust, it's bulletproof, and that we do save lives when we do it. Definitely. The last thing I want to do is to compl complicate the law on unaccompanied, on unaccompanied drivers. Uh, by accepting an amendment which is flawed. My ambition is to see it through, but to see it through as good law. Deputy Brohan, one minute. Opportunity, I mean, with your own staff in the Department of Transport, and we've had all of this over the years, incredible gaps between the Department of Transport uh, and the Department of Justice, uh, and the upshot of it is uh, that uh, we still have, you know, horrendous uh, lists of tragedies uh, year in, year out on Irish roads. You, me you, me you referred also to a, a related matter uh, you, you, in the amendment I proposed, in fact, to the 2016 Act uh, to strengthen the powers of Magarda Shikana where an unaccompanied driver is stopped. And, and there's still, you, you, you accept, I think, that there's still a, a lacuna in the legislation uh, that ca they can't simply seize the car or ask for somebody with a driving licence to take the car back to where it's based. Um, and uh, the Park Road Safety Group uh, said at the time, um, when a guard stops a learner driver and charges him, him or her for driving unaccompanied, it certainly makes no sense whatsoever that the guard must then allow, allow the driver to continue their uh, driving uh, unaccompanied. Um, and uh, I think you, you acknowledge that, that that needs to be 
changed. Uh, but once again, uh, we, like, we don't seem to have uh, a sense of urgency for, from you uh, in amending uh, Section 41 of the Road Traffic Act uh, 1994. Uh, we, uh, there's also issues, of course, in relation to the non-payment uh, of, of fines and to the FCNs in relation to unaccompanied drivers. Uh, it's a huge area of your administration, Minister, uh, uh, that we thought uh, before Christmas last year, and when the pres President Higgins signed this Act right. into law, including provisions on learner, uh, unaccompanied learner drivers, and here, again, the bottom line is here we are, yeah, ten months later are still asking you, begging you, to take action on this, and you're still, you're still dragging your heels. Minister, I'm going to be very strict. One minute. Okay. Um, I, I, I have to say to Deputy Brown, I, I do share your frustration here. I, and I, I would be saying the same myself, and, and I'm saying the same myself, in fact, in, in many ways. The, the, the problems I have here is, if, if you want me to simply defy uh, advice on issues of this sort, I think it would probably be grossly irresponsible, uh, particularly where human lives are at stake. And this is where we're all on the same side here. Uh, I want to make sure that human lives are saved. Uh, I've spent a large amount of time this year on these issues, and indeed, the signs and the figures and the statistics are encouraging. They're nothing like good enough, but we do seem to have made some progress oh my God. In, that, in that area. It is not yeah, enough. Indeed. There is more to do, and there is maybe, you're right, a need for a greater urgency, but we are tackling this in a multifaceted way with the simple objective of saving lives, which I know we, which I know is your interest, and, and this one will be pursued, I can guarantee you. Uh, we move on to... Uh